Oh, look at that. So 13,000 to 21,000. That's pretty good. So clearly more IOs per second are being done by the machine with velocity installed. Um, now that's predominantly going to be because of that RAM caching. Um, what it's done is figured out those read IOs that can be cached. It's got that data into server-side RAM um, and it's satisfying those read requests from there. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that I'm using uh, a NAND, uh, a, yeah, a NAND flash uh, drive here. Um, it's super fast. Um, and, uh, well, as fast as it is, I mean, natively with this test, about 12,000 IOs per second, which is really not to be sniffed at. That's pretty fast. But with velocity installed using that RAM, RAM is clearly faster, even still, than that new uh, flash drive that I've got in there. And the results are proving it. So let's close off those DAS for a moment and have a quick look at some of those other metrics in Iometer. So again, here at the top, this is the, the total number of IOs per second. So it's running at about 12,500 on the machine without velocity and over, yeah, I would say, yeah, over 20,000 on average. So that, a significant increase. In terms of the amount of data that's being processed, how much is being throughput, that's the next one here in total megabytes per second. So natively, it's, let's say, is that about 490 megabytes per second, roughly. On the one with velocity installed, that's over 700 megabytes per second. So clearly, it's processing a greater amount of, of work. Uh, the next one is the average I.O. response time in milliseconds. So that's how long is it taking to satisfy an I.O. request on average? So natively, um, I said this uh, storage was very fast. It's 0 0.15 milliseconds. The one with velocity, though, is 0 0.09. So it's taking less time to satisfy I.O. requests on the machine with velocity installed. Now, this is quite interesting as well. The amount of CPU utilization, it seems to be roughly the same. It's fluctuating a bit on both. So basically, we're getting more work done clearly on this machine on the right with velocity installed. But we're really not using any more CPU or processor time. I would say this is a pretty successful test. Now, just in case, uh, I'm going to bring up these dials again. So clearly, the velocity is having a beneficial effect on here. But how can we be certain? How can we be doubly certain that it's definitely the velocity software that's causing this increase in workload to be processed? Well, I guess the, the easiest way is to suddenly turn velocity off. So the quickest way of doing that is just to stop the velocity service. So let's do that. Net stop velocity. I'll make that a, a window a bit smaller. So we can s we should be able to see a pretty immediate effect on this dial. And it should drop down to about 12,000 or 13,000, similar to the one on the left where velocity is not optimizing anything. So I am going to hit the Enter key right now. And let's see if that needle drops. OK, the velocity service has stopped. And yes, it's immediately dropped back down. So now both machines are running just as they would as if velocity wasn't present. Now, just for a giggle, let's start it back up again. Let's start velocity. Now, again, the service is starting up. It will take a couple of minutes to uh, re-establish the cache and, and start providing benefit. But very quickly, we should start to see this needle move, just as we did before when we first started it up. So let's give that a, a moment to, to kick in and get initialized. We'll see if that needle starts moving again. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so 
literally within minutes of getting that software installed, it should be providing a beneficial effect. Well, I would say that's a pretty successful test.